Hello! Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to give an update on the basketball hoop that we installed. So it's that kind of time of year where you start thinking about all the outdoor activities your kids will never do. So you want to put in basketball hoops and trampolines, which I don't recommend, um, and all kinds of other stuff that they'll be super excited about for about three weeks and then their excitement will die down. Well, thankfully, that hasn't happened with our basketball hoop. Our kids still love to shoot baskets. They do it every night. Um, so it was a great purchase, great install. So let me tell you a few things about the installation. So I'll put a link in the description below on how we did the installation. Um, I had my boys help me do it because frankly they needed to put in some sweat equity to get this kind of work done. So a couple things. One is if you want to see the full video on how we did the install of this, um, like I said, you, you can look at the description below. There's a couple things I want to point out because some people reached out to me and said, Mr. Gizmo, you over, you way overkilled this thing. You didn't need that much concrete. Well, I don't care because at the end of the day, this basketball hoop's been through some heck of a windstorms and it's still standing. It doesn't even wobble. Nothing happens to it at all. It's really like, it's in there. You don't have to worry about it. So I don't want it to fall on cars either. So it's a good point. I'd put a, pour a couple extra bags of concrete in here for it not to fall on cars. And I followed the instructions almost to a T. Almost because I probably poured a little more concrete in there because I'd overkill some stuff. But at the end of the day, a couple people said, oh, you shouldn't, what you shouldn't do is get, have it so your concrete where your bolts are constantly in water, right? They shouldn't constantly be in water because they'll rust and erode and they'll have issues. Well, they're not. So when I did this, I leveled it with the driveway. It's actually a little bit higher than the driveway and I pitched it just a little bit. So it pitches down on all sides. So the middle's a little bit higher where the bolts go in and you can see that you know there's a little bit of runoff stuff because of the extra grass my son mowed into it but it does not sit in wet in a wet hole it doesn't do that at all so all the water runs off it runs into the grass this is just a tad bit higher than the driveway so it runs off into this little grass here and i put this around it and glued them into place so these are just extra bricks that we had I put it around it so it would hold back the soil from going over it and basically, you know, putting these bolts into the dirt. So highly suggest that. But at the end of the day, this was a great installation video. You guys can do this. Uh, the other thing that someone commented on is you don't need a cement mixer to mix all that cement. You just need a wheelbarrow and a good old shovel and you can mix it in the wheelbarrow. Yeah, you could do that. But for 50 bucks, I'll rent the mixer for a few hours. It was a ton easier. Pour a bag, throw some water in. It does the magic for you, and you just have to return it for 50 bucks to Home Depot. If you want to say 50 bucks, you certainly can mix it in a wheelbarrow or a five gallon bucket or whatever you want to do, right? But for me, $50 to have it mix it for me um, and have my boys mix it in there and dump bags and water in there was well worth the money. The other thing is, these are actually hook bolts. So these things go real deep into the concrete and they have a hook on the end of them like this, right? And they all, they have, each of these has that, all four of them have that. The reason being for that is they hook into the concrete so they don't twist, they don't move. So these will never loosen because the hook on the end keeps it put within the concrete. So that's really it. I mean, at the end of the day, watch the installation video. Um, you see the comments on it, keep the comments coming. You know, so this is a, this basketball hoop itself um, is really held up pretty well. So this is, you know, it's got, it's a, it's a lifetime basketball hoop. I want to say that we spent about $600 on it or so. Um, they're always on sale and stuff that we got ours on sale too. Um, but for the money, I know a lot of the, the gorilla goals, everyone wants the big old gorilla goals and stuff like that they got these massive posts you can dunk on stuff like that. It all depends on your level of play. My kids don't, they're not dunking on this very often. They do, it does have a crank to lower it. So if you have littler kids and you want them to shoot baskets, things like that, you can crank it down. Ours always stays at 10 foot, um, because Frankly, if you're going to shoot baskets, you should learn to shoot on a 10-foot pole uh, or 10-foot hoop. So, but it's held up really well. The only thing I didn't like about it is it had this massive sticker on it. This massive sticker was a real pain in the butt. I got most of it peeled off now, um, but it had a massive sticker on it to, you know, a bunch of warnings and things like that, but you're never going to read it. In fact, by the time two months passes, it's so torn off that you can't see the warnings anyway. So the sticker is kind of a pain. So. The only other thing that is a little bit I don't really like about this, there's a couple different little things. One is that, see the, the underneath, it's got like a foam on it, so you don't bump your head when you're jumping as a six foot five person. Um, 
that's really nice of that it holds a little bit of water so at the end of the day when you first start shooting after it rains it holds water so you'll get some drips and stuff of that from it which is not that big a deal um, the other thing is the rim loosens pretty quickly but because it cranks down, you literally can crank it all the way down, tighten the rim, crank it all the way back up again, and you're back in business. So those are the only two things that I really kind of like, I guess you'd say things you could talk about. I don't know. They're not a problem for us. We use it all the time. We shoot almost every night. And so uh, that's really it. So I'll put a link in the description below uh, for the insul insulation. And I think I, we did one as well on the assembly of it as well. Um, to put the basketball hoop in. We did one on the base and then one on the assembly. We'll put a link in both of them. And the other thing is I've been seeing a bunch of people ask about, you know, obviously we're getting a lot more hits on this video as well because to install a basketball hoop right now, people are charging $800, $1,000, $1,200 and install a basketball hoop. That's insane. It's insane. It's mixing uh, a few bags of concrete and digging a two by two hole. It's nothing to do. You can absolutely do this yourself. It's, it's a do it yourself gig all day long and twice on Sundays. So you can do this, um, do not pay those fees. And if you're in Charlotte, just message me. If you wanna pay someone $1,000, I'll show up to your house with a couple bags of concrete and put your basketball concrete hole in. Um, it's super easy to do, please do it on your own. Um, that's it, I'll put a link in the description below to the videos, um, subscribe to our channel. We'll give you more updates and things like that, but this is the update for the basketball hoop installation and the hoop itself, thanks.